Panga is on the move, finally bringing it to the shop. Welcome back to the Panga build. It's 114 degrees outside, which means it's a right around 132 inside. Panga's been under a tarp in the backyard at the house for quite some time. I haven't done anything to it. But now it's time to start getting working on it again because I've got a fishing trip here in November on the White River again in Arkansas. And I'm gonna go catch a pile of trout. This Panga I'm building, this 14 footer is the perfect boat for that. Perfect boat for all sort of stuff. As you can see, while this thing was under the tarp in the backyard, the dogs decided that they were gonna go ahead and chew on my panga, which of course has caused me a large amount of distress. Fortunately, most of these spots are gonna be cut out of the boards to make way for the shear clamp, which is a one by two. So I'm gonna go around and notch these out, mark this off, notch them out, get ready to cut each one of these pieces. And then we're going to scarf together some one by twos to make the shear clamp. You see this thing is taking quite a beating, but everything's still stout and solid. The wood looks a little aged, but it's gonna be all right. The highest point it's supposed to ride. Man, these dogs ate the hell out of this boat. Next, I'm just gonna find where my marks went to. I'm gonna mark straight across the face of the board here. Now all of these marks are just basic cutout marks. Each one of these little pockets is gonna change based on how the board runs into it. Phew. I'm just gonna chop the rest of these notches out with the jigsaw. Might as well cut them off, huh? That's yeah, pretty good. All that crap has got to go. The shear clamps, the lumber we're using for that, they've got natural bends in them, see? We use that bend to our advantage. What we gotta do now is scarf these four boards into two boards and uh, get ready to stick that sucker on the hull. Hey, man. Yeah. No laying down on the job, bro. Oh. somewhere they're going to fit together fine for our purposes so that is some local hardware store epoxy that's pretty good one of the problems with having your shop next to a rail yard and a trucking company is the noises never stop. So oftentimes, my audio is gonna be garbage, even though I've invested in some good microphones. Finally, probably to the delight of many of you, even garbage epoxy is pretty good, you know? I mean, it's getting the job done, right? Now this is the wrong tool for the job. I have a cutoff wheel on here, but I also know that I can make a cutoff wheel work. That epoxy stinks. Seriously, when you grind this epoxy, it smells like baby diapers, like bad ones. Weird. It's pretty stout though. Specifically, it smells like Carson's baby diapers when he was about six months old. You hear me, Carson? 
One thing you will learn if you start building boats is you need a ton of clamps. I mean, as many clamps as you can get your hands on, can afford, and you still won't have enough clamps. I'm gonna pre-drill some holes, and we're gonna add some glue and some screws. The screws are just to hold them in place. Technically, I don't think we actually even need the screws, but the screws do a fine job of stopping everything from moving once you glue it up. The wood that we're using for shear clamps are much higher quality than the framing on the rest of the boat. It's a clear yellow pine, just a much higher quality. Oh! Jeez! Don't forget to scrape off the squeeze out so you don't have to grind it off later. If I didn't mention it earlier, we're using a polyurethane glue. Very good for this application. Scarves are holding really nice. This is the fifth time I've heard the Night of the Roxbury song from across the street. What are you people doing? They build trailers over there. It's a trailer manufacturing company, and they're playing that Baby Don't Hurt Me song. It's like the fifth or sixth time I've heard it in the last two hours. What the hell is going on over there? Knock it off! I want you guys to remember, you're not gonna see me asking for your Patreon money or any of that other stuff. I have a job. I don't want anything from you, but maybe your attention for 15 minutes a week and uh, a sub, a like. Nothing much. I'm not asking much from you. And look at what I'm giving you. It's, I, I know it's falling apart. It's a piece of shit, but I, I'm trying, okay? So sub to the channel and watch me get better at this shit. I'm sorry. I've been drinking, okay? Here, I got one over here. These white claw surges. 8%? Yeah, they're the truth. Everything else can take a back seat now. I went from White Claws back to my Coronas, and then they came out with these babies. Just makes me want to run my car into a bridge abutment, you know what I mean? They're pretty stout. <laughs> Plans call for two screws here. But the builder, Jeff Spira, rest in peace by the way, Mr. Spira, he died about four or five months ago. Great dude. You know, he come up with these designs for these boats that you can build out of framing lumber from Home Depot. And it makes it so that regular schmucks like you and me, blue collar cats that don't have $35,000 for a little boat, and we can build something like this. I mean, he's got plans for these things made out of framing lumber. Uh, they were up to 50 feet long, I think, was the biggest one he had. The website's been taken down. The plans are no longer available. And there was a deal where if you wanted to build another boat that you already bought plans for, you could send him some money, kind of like a licensing agreement. You know, you, instead of paying $240 for the plans, you'd pay $75 for the rights to build another one. I, I don't think I got to do that now. I mean, they've totally made the entire thing defunct. There's nowhere to send money to. Like, I've been contacted by a dude, and if you're out there, dude, I'm working on this. It was a guy who wanted, wanted these plans. He wanted to build one of these packages forever. And now that Mr. Spire is dead and the website's down, he can't buy the plans, right? So I don't know, I might give him, I might give him these. I mean, I don't see the harm in it, right? If, they, if they're not giving you a venue to collect the money. I mean, it's an ethical question that I don't think I'm prepared to handle. But if somebody comes after me, I'll just give them the money. You know what I mean? I mean, it's that simple, right? But yeah, if you want to build one of these, we'll figure something out. And you know who I'm talking to? You out there left that comment in the last Panga video I did, I think. It actually scared me a little bit. I was like, can I do that? He wanted me to sell him my plan. No, man, I'm not gonna sell you the plans. But you better go and like all 78 videos that I've made. Then you can have the plans. So listen here, fellas. Even if that 19-year-old girl you're dating only wants you for your money, the fat guy loves you for you. I'll always be right here whenever you need me, pal. See you next week. <laughs>